class and welcome sa first lecture natin on obligations and contracts. For this, uh, for this lecture, uh, we will be discussing yung origins ng obligations and contracts as a as an area of study uh, by looking at uh, what the law is and where obligations and contracts is in relation doon sa mas sa bigger picture ng lahat ng, ng lahat ng laws uh, that there is nasaan ba ang obligations and contracts in in that whole gamut of uh, laws that we are talking about now before we go there before we uh, before we discuss the specific provisions of obligations and contracts Punta muna tayo sa general idea ng law in general. Now, when uh, of course, in the context nitong subject natin, we are talking about yung written laws. Ano? But uh, there are actually a lot of kinds of laws that, uh, are, that are there. And it's not just yung mga laws na tinutukoy natin, yung mga legal provisions, but also there are non-legal conceptions of law. There are concepts na which are not necessarily legal, but they are considered as law. First of all, we have, uh, there's a kind of law that's called divine law, which is, uh, as you know, this is, uh, these are laws uh, promulgated by a certain religious belief. Uh, ito, yung mga, ito, yung mga, ito yung mga laws relating to uh, the, the teachings of a certain religion. For example, uh, in the Christian faith, uh, there are laws that we need to follow. There are guidelines, there are, uh, there are rules that we need to follow. And these are what we call uh, divine law. Uh, and second, we have... Uh, natural law. Well, kung sa, if uh, divine law is uh, is based on religion or religious beliefs, uh, natural law is based naman on uh, uh, on reason alone, not necessarily uh, not necessarily divine or religious doctrines. Ano? Example: the idea of uh, justice, fairness. All of these things are covered by this idea of natural law. Ngayon, uh, some natural laws have a connection doon sa divine law. Uh, they have similarities, for example. Uh, for example, in, uh, in the natural law, killing is immoral. Ano? And that has resemblance sa divine law, which is, uh, for example, in the Catholic faith, thou shalt not kill, diba? These are these are similar, but that doesn't mean that they they come from uh, they come from the same source. In divine law, it is uh, sourced from uh, it is sourced from a certain religious uh, system, remembering religious rules, religious laws. While in natural law, we are only talking here of yung notions of justice, notions of fairness, and etc. So, uh, natural law is more neutral in a sense that it does not favor one religion or another. Uh, ngayon, if, uh, for example, if the, on the debate of abortion, uh, divine law is clear on that, na you shall not kill, therefore, uh, therefore, uh, it is wrong under divine law, but not necessarily under natural law. Uh, depende yan sa justification for doing something. Because, it is, again, it is based on reason. Uh, another uh, another uh, thing that we need to consider is moral law. Sa moral law naman, uh, these are rules governing what is right and wrong. And moral law can be, uh, is subjective uh, and moral law is subjective. Ibig sabihin, it, uh, it may differ from one culture to another. Uh, what is right or wrong in one culture may not be may not be necessarily the same with another culture. That is uh, the, the, the idea of morals, the idea of morality 
is somehow uh, culturally subjective in a sense na sometimes there are things that we consider wrong in one culture and uh, right in another culture. But then, but then again, these are rules governing morals and it is within the context of culture of a certain group or uh, collective. Another kind is, uh, actually I'm referring to the ano, itong framework natin dito sa screen. Ano? And this will be, uh, our lectures will be structured this way. Mer- magbibigay ako sa inyo ng, stru- uh, ng outline natin. And we'll be following this in the discussions. So, another one is physical law. Uh, physical law is the laws of uh, physics, the laws of uh, the loss of science, the loss, the loss of nature, and uh, uh, in a sense that uh, they, they, spe- they, they are, these are not rules in in uh, uh, these are not rules per se like like uh, moral law or divine law where you are instructed to do something or not do to uh, to not do something because it is by the good, but in the physical law these are just uh, these are uh, these are more advanced versions of theories like. Uh, the law of gravity. Uh, the law of gravity states that uh, something that goes up must go down. Diba? It is not necessarily governing human uh, humans, but the, natu- the natural world, the physical world. So this is uh, what we call physical law. And finally, uh, I think this is the most relevant in our uh, discussion today, state laws. Itong state law na tinatawag natin are the laws that are promulgated by the legislature and are followed by the people because these are the rules that govern uh, a certain nation. Now, state laws uh, are actually products of what we call the social contract. Now, as as you might remember, uh, social contracts are... Uh, the, the social contract theory states that uh, a person surrender some of uh, his or her liberty uh, in exchange for the protection of the government. In prote- in uh, uh, This justifies the presence of governments because, uh, of course, there are uh, different theories here, but basically, we surrender some of our, uh, we surrender some of our freedoms in order for a certain body, which is the government, to regulate the actions of the citizens because at the end of the day uh, at the end of the day we are in uh, we we need to survive and if we assume for example that that, that human nature is evil we will hurt each other to to ano, to attain the goal of uh, well surviving that's that's one theory ano, but that's not all uh, so we need the government in order to regulate the conduct of men and, and women and of people rather so that is why state laws exist and these are again like what i uh, said a while ago these are products of the legislature kumbaga ginagawa sila ng congress in our in the philippines our congress is divided into into two chambers you already know that uh, the senate and the house of representatives they are the ones making the laws so dapat ang mga congressman at mga senador are making laws and perhaps nothing else you know? so uh so oblicon obligations and contracts are within the realm of uh, state law and these are in short these are legislated laws that we need to follow and uh, state laws can be conceptualized uh as either general or specific when we say uh yung concepts uh, on the first on the you know, on the second column uh, law law in general speaks of uh, well the whole of the whole gamut of laws that we're talking about like the, the law of the land kung ano ba yung mga laws natin sa paligid it's the it's more of a general conception it's more of a general idea when we speak of law in general if we speak of laws, uh, if we speak of a specific law, for example, uh, there are many laws, right? And that those are collectively called as law in the general sense. But there are specific laws that are uh, that govern human, 
that govern human behavior. For example, uh, civil law, where uh, obligations and contracts is, as you will see later on, uh, it is within the realm of civil law. And if we look uh, very specific, more specifically, it is under uh, it is under ob law and obligations and contracts. Uh, the law and obligations and con uh, contracts refer to some uh, to a number of articles in the civil code. So, ayan. So that's law in the general and specific sense. Uh, laws can be characterized into four uh, as four things. Una, uh, laws are rules of conduct. Uh, ibig sabihin, itong mga batas na to ay uh, they regulate the conduct of humans. They uh, they make you behave in a certain way. Kung baka kinokontrol niya yung galaw ng bawat tao. For example, uh, a law that says uh, bawal pumatay, just like what we have said a while ago, ano, it regulates the, your conduct in a sense na uh, you will not uh, you will not kill because it will have consequences. So, it regulates you to conduct in a certain way. Or for example, uh, when you see when you see uh, yung ano, yung uh, uh, pedestrian lane, for example, you are directed, kahit na ano, even if there is no, uh, even if there is no enforcer there, you are bound to go there. Sa, uh, sa ano sa sa lane uh, pedestrian lane because uh, the law says that you need to follow that otherwise there will be consequences if you are caught so in somehow it regulates your conduct it uh, it directs you to behave in a certain way so it is uh, considered a rule of conduct next laws are also obligatory they are obligatory in a sense that uh, you need to follow, otherwise there will be consequences. You are required to follow it at all cost. Otherwise, well, uh, the government can sanction you. They can throw you in jail. They can fine you for for uh, well for not doing any, uh, for doing what is prohibited, and they can they can require you to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. Like, uh, you would not, of course, hindi ayaw mo magbayad ng taxes daily. Uh, ayaw mo magbayad ng taxes, right? But you are obliged to pay your taxes because, uh, well, they, there are consequences if you don't. The law has a lot of means to uh, enforce yung, yung power ng batas over us. For example, uh, on the provision na bawal ka mag, uh, you are you are not allowed to steal someone's possession, diba? If you don't follow that, uh, well, there will be consequences. Gaya nga nang sabi po nina, pwede kang hulihin ng state for not, uh, for not following the law. Because at the end of the day, again, it is obligatory. Uh, laws are obligatory. Another characteristic is that uh, laws are promulgated by leg uh, legitimate authority. What does this mean? Uh, laws are laws are crafted and enacted by uh, by Congress. Si Congress ang gumagawa niyan. And at the end of the day, this will, this is passed to the president for signing, and then it becomes a law. There is a legit. Uh, these laws are uh, are what do you call this? These laws are created because of the legitimacy that we give to the government. We recognize our government as a legitimate body, and we we recognize the Congress as an as a legislative body that is authorized to make laws for us. And the same way, ganon din sa president. We uh, we legitimize the president to enforce kung ano man yung mga batas natin. So, as long as this, uh, as long as the the government enjoys the legitimacy na binibigay ng mga tao, uh, then uh, it uh, these laws can uh, are perfectly valid now uh, of course in the in our class you know uh, i can say uh, well uh, i for one i can create my own law own laws for example uh bawal uh 
bawal uh, bawal ang pangit sa class. So uh, that is a that is a rule, right? And that could be very that could very well be considered as law in my class. But uh, in relation to the whole, uh, it is not uh, it is not a valid law because I am not a legitimate authority to create laws. Tama. Uh, in the context ng sa con- sa konteksto ng ano ng ng bansa natin, I am not a I am not a legislator, so I cannot legislate on that. Yung merits ng legislation na is another issue, but then again, I am not a legitimate authority to make laws. So I cannot make them obligatory. I cannot make them. I cannot conduct. I cannot uh, direct the conduct of, ano, of human behavior because I am not a legitimate authority. Yun lang naman yung point nun. So again, uh, in in our case, only the legislature has the power to make laws. These laws. So uh, it's a function of the legislative department, which consists of yung mga congressman natin and yung mga senador. Uh, and finally, uh, the law is of common observance and benefit. Now, uh, the thing, the idea is that uh, the laws must be observed by everyone. Ano? Kaya nga nang sabi ko kanina, uh, it, it should direct the conduct of everyone. And it, is, it must be for common benefit as well. Hindi pwedeng yung mga batas natin are just favoring the benefit of some people. Hindi pwedeng yung mga batas natin uh, nagbibigay ng benefit sa, kunwari, sa isa, dalawang tao, mga ganun. But it must be uh, for the benefit of everyone. Kumbaga, ang yung uh, the benefit of, uh, ang mas pinapanigan ng batas ay yung benefit ng mas nakararami as opposed to the benefit of one or a few. For example, uh, so, sir, Pwede bang, uh, pwede, eh, so ibig sabihin, hindi pwede, hindi, kung may benefit, lahat kailangan mag, mag, lahat kailangan mabigyan. For example, sa four piece, dapat ba kailangan, eh, lahat uh, kailangan bigyan ng pera on a regular basis? Well, in that case, uh, y- yung mga ganong legislation kasi are geared towards, uh, what do you call this? Uh, these are social justice legislations. Kung baga, uh, those who need it more must be given more like uh for example of course uh four piece uh, the four piece ang, ang ang purpose ng four piece as a law is to uh give uh to give to assist yung mga may hirap to uh to have a better life ano do rich people need that of course not hindi na nila kailangan yan so uh the law must be directed only towards yung mga yung mga mahihirap but does that mean that it does not uh it, it is not for common benefit of course it's for common benefit kasi uh if there uh, if the lives of the poor are benefited uh, if the lives of the poor are bet uh, are made better hindi lang silang magbe-benefit doon kundi the whole the whole of society so it's still uh, for common benefit. So let's go now to the sources of laws in the Fili- of sources of state law in the Philippines. Uh, of course, first and foremost is the Constitution. The Constitution is considered as a supreme law of the land because uh, ito yung pinakamataas sa lahat ng mga batas and all other laws, lahat ng mga batas ay kailangan sumunod dito sa Constitution. Otherwise, they may be uh, declared unconstitutional by the courts. Ngayon, uh, the, uh, sa kasalukuyan, we are using the 1987 Constitution, as you may know, perhaps from your other subjects. And again, this uh, Constitution is the basis ng lahat ng mga batas that will follow. So, uh, kailangan sumunod ang lahat ng batas dito sa Constitution neto. And the next one is uh, on legislations. Uh, itong legis- uh, le- legislations, uh, these are laws created by Congress uh, that uh, in, again in order to uh, in order to to manage the behavior of people. Now, uh, lahat ng mga batas sa ngayon ay galing na sa Congress because uh, it is what is mandated under 
1987 Constitution. But there are times that uh, yung sources natin ng batas uh, and sometimes uh, yung mga ano, uh, nagiging na-consider na, uh, for, at for a while, na-consider na batas yung mga tinatawag natin na executive orders. If we we'll, if we look for example doon sa ano doon sa uh, structure ng Philippine government supposedly the president is just uh, the, the role of the president is just to uh, to implement yung mga batas natin and the president comes up with executive orders para implement itong mga batas na to the president this currently the president does not have the power to make laws walang karapatan ng presidente gumawa ng mga batas that has no basis na legislation but during the time of uh, marcos we have what we call presidential decrees and in the during the time of cory uh, 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 the first few few years of cory's reign we have these executive orders wherein Itong mga enactments ng mga presidente ito, Marcos and Cory, were considered as laws as if they are passed by Congress. So, uh, in this case, um, executive orders can be the source of laws as well. And uh, another source of state law are judicial decisions. Uh, this means that uh, the decisions of the Supreme Court on matters relating to in the interpretation of laws is also considered as a source of law. For example, uh, if the Congress, for example, uh, created a law, pero hindi ito malinaw, or there is uh, it, it cannot be, it is uh, it is subject to several interpretations. Uh, the interpretation of the Supreme Court is what is considered as the correct interpretation. And such interpretation becomes part of the law. So, ayun, in a sense, it is a source of uh, state law as well. Kasi doon napapaliwanag kung ano bang ibig sabihin nung batas na ginawa ng Congress. So, those are the sources of uh, sources of state, uh, of state law, again, uh, the Constitution, legislations, executive orders or presidential decrees, and judicial decisions. Now, uh, there are several classifications of state law. First is, uh, as to its purpose, it can either be substantive law or procedural law. Now, itong mga substantive law, uh, these, are, uh, these are the laws that give rights or gives rights to obligation, mga ganun. Basically, every act of Congress, uh, most of the acts of Congress are considered as substantive law. Now, uh, procedural laws, on the other hand, are usually uh, laws in the loose sense which uh, guide the procedures in the courts, for example. Uh, example of this are the rules of court, which are technically promulgated by the uh, by the by the judiciary, but with the powers vested in them in the in the constitution, itong mga itong mga procedures na to, the rules of court, the rules of uh, uh the iba't ibang rules under the rules of court like rules on civil procedure, uh rules on criminal procedure, and all of these pr procedural laws are there to uh to regulate yung ano or to uh to regulate yung, ano, yung conduct ng enforcement of rights. So, that is classification according to purpose. And uh, as to the classification as a subject matter, laws can either be public law or private law. The public laws are laws that govern the relations of humans uh, in relation to the state or of of people in relation to the states. For example, uh, these are the laws that uh, govern yung ano natin, yung uh, how how will our relation be with the with the government with the state. Ano? Uh, these public laws include yung uh, international law and criminal law. Now, for example, in criminal law, 
actually when there is a crime committed hindi lang yung uh, hindi lang yung parties ang involved ang uh, ang tunay na parties to the suit but actually even the state for example may pinatay ka uh, that there is uh, there is a murder or homicide charge against you pero uh, does it mean na uh, ang offend mo lang doon ay yung taong napatay mo well uh, according to according to the principles of criminal law hindi ganon uh, when you commit a crime against a, a, a person you actually you are committing a crime against the state because you are uh, being a you're being um, an enemy or you are causing uh, public disorder and that's where the 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 state comes in kaya nga pag sa mga kasong criminal when these are when, when there are criminal cases these are usually uh, named uh, republic uh, the uh, people of the philippines versus uh, versus you for example uh, people of the philippines versus bautista kung ako why is that ang kalaban natin dito in a criminal case is not just the uh, is not just yung offended party but also the state because you are causing uh, disorder sa sa society in general you are being a danger to society in general so buong society ang affected in these criminal laws and that's what makes it public law because uh, it regulates the uh, the relationship between the state and and men in general so uh, private laws uh, regulate the uh, the relationship between private individuals so one classic example dito is civil law wherein uh, usually they deal with uh, issues of property uh, marriage uh, debts or uh, obligations contracts so kaya nga makikita natin diyan sa sa ating ano sa ating free uh, sa ating outline that law on obligations and contracts is actually an example of private law because it uh, regulates uh, it um, it deals with the relations ng private individuals or private entities uh, with each other so be, most most of the time walang uh, wala masyadong pakialam ng state diyan except uh, of course, if yung enforcement of rights na ang pinag-uusapan. But basically, these private laws uh, affect private persons in relation to another private person. So, that is the that is where law on obligations and contracts uh, enter. So, um, again, so kung mapapansin natin, we already discussed yung concepts, whether what is law on, in the general sense and what is law in the uh, in the in the specific sense uh, what are the yung characteristics of law being uh, a rule of conduct uh, it, it is obligatory promulgated by legitimate authority and uh, of common observance and benefit the sources of uh, sources of law the constitution legislations executive orders and judicial decisions and finally the classification of laws now, uh, again, there are two subclassifications, as to purpose and as to subject matter. Uh, as to purpose, it can either be substantive law and pro or procedural law. Uh, by the way, law on obligations and contracts is an example of substantive law. And as to subject matter, public uh, either public law or private law. Uh, as you have said a while ago, uh, private law, uh, civil law is under private law and of law and obligations and contracts is under civil law. So, law and obligations and contracts are what we call, uh, are what we consider as private laws. So, in order to understand uh, how this, uh, how the law works in general, we, I think we need to uh, discuss these basic legal principles. Uh, first is that ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. This means na uh, you cannot uh, you cannot use ignorance as a defense whenever uh, whenever you violate the law because uh, your ignorance of the law does not excuse you from complying with what is required under the law. 
So, um, you are not excused kahit hindi mo alam. And that is, uh, that is because, I think this, this rule is because uh, we can always, uh, people can always claim that they are ignorant, that they do not know the law. So, makakalusot sila lagi. So, I think this is a very important, very important principle that you should, that everyone should know. Uh, number two, if there is no law or if the law is unclear, the judge or court should nonetheless render judgment. Gaya nung nasabi ko kanina, uh, one source of law is the interpretation of the courts or the Supreme, the, uh, in, gen- in particular the Supreme Court when it comes to ambiguities or yung mga hindi malinaw na mga provisions ng batas or if there is none. Uh, the court is still required to render judgment kahit na walang batas na, sum- na, na tumutukoy sa isang bagay. But given na uh, mat- medyo matagal-tagal na rin ng ating legal system, uh, perhaps there there is little ano, use for this. Pero again, once na hindi hindi marino yung batas or the, there's no law, the judge or the court may should always render judgment nonetheless. And finally, if there's doubt... Uh, in the in the laws, ang presumption is that the legislators intended right and justice to prevail. Ibig sabihin, uh, the intention of the legislators is uh, kung ano ang tama at kung ano ang just, yun ang magpe-prevail. Yun ang, uh, yun ang kailangan sundin. So, in, in uh, the court, in interpreting yung mga laws na ginagawa ng legislature, they have to, make, they have to consider this na yung kung ano man ng just in the situation, yun ang susundin. So, these are the legal principles na kailangan nating malaman. Uh, in the Philippines, there are, there are uh, various courts that uh, where you can file cases. So, first is we have the, we have the regular courts. In the regular court system, the highest court is the Supreme Court the Supreme Court is the highest court in the uh, in the Philippines. And uh, this means that uh you cannot af- appeal your uh your case further if tapos nang i-resolve yun sa Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh in general only uh, only entertains questions of law. If uh, yung mga ma- yung mga ano lang, yung mga uh provisions of law lang ang di-discuss nila diyan and the Supreme Court is not a trier of facts. Ibig sabihin, the Supreme Court will not judge, will ad- will not judge whether, uh, whether a claim, whether your position is correct or not, whether your, I mean, whether the facts that you are saying are correct or not, because the Supreme Court is not a trier of facts. It is a trier of law. So only legal questions are usually, uh, raised to the Supreme Court level. So, Court of Appeals naman, the Court of Appeals is an appeals court. Ibig sabihin, uh, wala siyang uh, court of or uh, court of uh, original jurisdiction. Uh, court of Appeals receives appeals from the regional trial courts, uh, usually. So, the Court of Appeals, uh, there is only one Court of Appeals, although it is divis- divided into several divisions. And the more common ones, the more common courts are the regional trial courts and metro uh, and municipal trial courts. There are uh, these are the first level courts in a sense that uh, dito nagu originate yung mga kaso na naya appeal sa higher courts. So uh, there are of uh, there are some matters that uh, are that are resolved in the municipal trial court level. And there are matters that are resolved in the regional trial court, the trial court, trial court levels. For example, uh, in criminal cases, sa ang jurisdiction ng municipal trial co- trial courts are six years and below. Yung mga ang penalty, yung mga krimen, ang penalties are six years and below. Just sa municipal trial courts, while sa regional trial courts, there's yung mga medyo mas uh, matataas, like six uh, above six years ang penalty. So, uh, nakadepende sa klase ng case kung saan siya mapupunta kung sa municipal trial court or sa regional trial courts. 
Another is, uh, there are what we call special courts. There are two special courts in the Philippines. We have uh, the Sandigan Bayan for uh, for uh, public of, uh, for offenses involving public officials, and Court of Tax Appeals uh, for cases uh, uh, for tax related cases. And finally, we have what we call quasi-judicial courts or uh, these are actually under the executive department but they have, uh, they, have, uh, they have the authority to adjudicate or mag- to act as judges on certain matters relating to their expertise. For example, in uh, for election protest, we have uh, COMELEC. For uh, labor disputes, meron tayong NLRC. Kung me, uh, related to franchises, we have the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB. And for traffic violations, we have the Land Transportation Office. So these are, in a sense, these are the uh, these are. Uh, executive de- uh, they are they are agencies under the executive department but they have quasi judicial powers ibig sabihin they can uh, adjudicate yung mga kaso where they have an expertise they ha- they supposedly have an expertise in bago dumaan sa mga ano bago dumaan sa courts yung kaso they must go through the judicial uh, quasi judicial bodies first so uh, as, a, as a note here, uh, sa baba, these courts follow a certain order where one cannot go directly go to a higher court without passing through the lower courts. This is what we call the higher, doctrine of hierarchy of courts. So again, uh, a petition cannot go directly sa Supreme Court. Or for example, if it's a traffic violation, hindi pa din pumunta agad yan sa courts. They must go through the quasi judicial bodies first. Uh, for example, um, uh, a murder case cannot go immediately to the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court because it has to pass through first the lower courts. So that is what uh, we mean by the doctrine of hierarchy of courts. So uh, now we have a, a working idea of how the legal system works. So uh, Hopefully, this uh, this general, this very gen- general uh, discussion of what what the law is, where it comes from, what are the what uh, about the what's uh, what happens in the Philippine legal system. Um, I hope with that we can start with uh, we can start discussing uh, law and obligations and contracts with enough knowledge to uh with enough knowledge to understand what the what the what the law is about you know so uh for next meeting we will be discussing obligations so thank you for listening